Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the neuromuscular and nervous system portion of the exam. On test day, you can expect somewhere around 39 to 48 questions re related to this section. It is certainly the second largest single section on the exam worth spending plenty of time on, making sure that you are adequately prepared for the exam. As we go through this, this podcast, we're going through the FSBPT's published content outline with the purpose being to become familiar not only with the quantity of topics that are, that are tested on the NPT, but also practice questions and the actual content so that you are adequately prepared for the exam. Before we get to our practice question today, just a quick reminder, we are starting up our VIP course right away. So if you're looking for the most robust, most uh, user-friendly, best organized course out there on the market, you'll find it here with the VIPT program. So the VIPT program, this is one that I personally run. We go through all of the systems on the exam. We meet up several times a week, twice a week, to talk through practice questions. This is one of the things that I talk to students all the time about is that they have they have a pretty good grasp of the content, but when it comes to test day, it's quite difficult to narrow down your selection to the one single best correct answer. And so we spend a lot of time talking about how to narrow it down to you know get rid of the outliers, get it down to two, and then making the correct choice between the two narrowed down answers so that you can find the correct answer. We talk about a lot of statistics, evidence-based practice when it comes to study technique. Uh, so not only do we talk about strategy for the exam, strategy for studying for the exam, we also talk about loads and loads and loads of content. So again, that's the VIP program. That's the one that's the really the most fun to go through because uh, we have the time to be able to go through all of the content on the exam. Plus you get 12 months of access to it. So once you sign up for the VIP program, you'll get the best bang for your buck signing up earlier rather than later. So you'll be able to take advantage of the cycles of the course as we go through preparing for each exam date. So you won't wanna miss that. Plus it comes with, I mean, not to mention six practice exams, a full study guide, workbook, written material. Uh, additionally, you get a full and vast video library going through all the content on the exam. It is quite robust. And again, I, uh, you just won't find anything as, as thorough and well-organized out there on the web as the VIP program. So I hope you'll consider joining. We're starting up this week. Next week is into the musculoskeletal system. So you'll want to sign up as quickly as possible as we go through those scenario-based questions. So uh, starting in 2024 and then beyond into 2025, uh, they added these scenario-based questions, which honestly are kind of a pain. So we talk about how to prepare for those, what, what precisely you'll need to do to be totally ready for those scenario-based items. Again, all of that's a part of the VIP program. All right, let's go and dive into our practice question. As per our usual, I'll, I will read you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. A patient with lateral medullary syndrome or a patient with Wallenberg syndrome, so lateral medullary or Wallenberg syndrome, it will most likely demonstrate which of the following clinical manifestations. So we've got a patient with lateral medullary syndrome will most likely demonstrate which of the following clinical manifestations. One, contralateral cerebellar ataxia. Two, contralateral impaired tactile and proprioceptive sensation. Three, ipsilateral impaired facial pain and temperature sensation. And four, ipsilateral tongue paralysis and atrophy. So again, this is a patient with lateral medullary syndrome, most likely to demonstrate which of the following clinical manifestations. So one, contralateral cerebellar ataxia. Two, contralateral impaired tactile and proprioceptive sensation. Three, ipsilateral impaired facial pain and temperature. And four, ipsilateral tongue paralysis and atrophy. So again, this is kind of a mix and match question. As you look at this, you see that with lateral medullary syndrome, asking basically, is it contralateral or ipsilateral? And then a variety of clinical manifestations, including cerebellar ataxia, impaired tactile proprioceptive sensation, ipsilateral impaired facial pain and temperature, or ipsilateral tongue paralysis and atrophy. Well, the correct answer here is that option three, ipsilateral impaired facial pain and temperature sensation. So when you have an infarct of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, this is what causes lateral medullary syndrome. So we're, we're getting part of the lateral medulla oblongata. It's caused by occlusion of that posterior inferior cerebellar artery. 
And the most likely result of that will be decreased pain and temperature sensation on the ipsilateral face and contralateral trunk and limbs. So it's this, this strange presentation where the ipsilateral face has pain and temperature loss and the contralateral trunk and limbs has temp pain and temperature loss. So additionally, you'll have ipsilateral ataxia, nystagmus, and Horner syndrome. And so I broke this all down. I've got it on a table. Those of you who are watching the YouTube version of this, and I'll try to describe this as best I can for the audio listeners here. Lateral medullary syndrome, also known as Wallenberg syndrome, ipsilateral to the impairment, you have impaired pain and temperature on the face. You've got Horner's syndrome, which is where you have meiosis, ptosis, and hydrosis. So a, a, a facial demonstration where your eyelid is drooping. Uh, you've got anhydrosis, inability to sweat. That's a sympathetic trunk damage issue. Uh, limb ataxia, nystagmus, dysphagia, dysphonia, all of that is on the ipsilateral, uh, ipsilateral side of the body. Contralaterally, you have impaired pain and temperature of the upper and lower extremities and trunk. So again, that's lateral medullary syndrome. You have impaired pain and temperature on the ipsilateral face and contralateral upper and lower extremity. And I suppose that's the biggest thing to take, take home from, from today's session is that the lateral medullary syndrome from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery is most likely to cause uh, the deficit of, of pain and temperature on the ipsilateral face and the contralateral upper and lower extremity. Now, I put also on this, uh, again, for those of you who aren't watching it, those of you just to describe it in audio, in audio format, the medial medullary syndrome. Medial med medullary syndrome is a little bit of the opposite. You have a paralysis of the ipsilateral tongue and the contralateral upper and lower extremities. So with medial medullary syndrome, it's affecting more of the motor pathways. And so with medial medullary syndrome, you've got paralysis of the ipsilateral tongue and the contralateral upper and lower extremities with impaired contralateral pain, or <laughs> I want to make sure I say this right, impaired contralateral tactile and proprioceptive sense. So that's the medial med medullary syndrome, which is more about paralysis than it is about pain and temperature loss. So medial medullary syndrome is paralysis, especially on the contralateral upper and lower extremities. Whereas lateral medullary syndrome, you have loss of pain and temperature on the contralateral upper and lower extremities. So again, just to drive home that point one more time, medial medullary syndrome, you'll have paralysis of the contralateral upper and lower extremities, whereas lateral medullary syndrome, you'll have impaired pain and temperature sensation on the contralateral upper and lower extremities. So there you go. In a nutshell, again, I know those of you who are listening to this as you're uh, on your way to work or maybe you're exercising, whatever it is, uh, definitely worth spending a little bit of time just to make sure you've got this all straight in your mind. Medial medullary syndrome, causes paralysis issues on the contralateral upper and lower extremities, whereas lateral medullary syndrome is impaired pain and temperature on contralateral upper and lower extremities. So there you go. Medial medullary, paralysis, lateral medullary, pain and temperature loss. Excellent. So that's that's one of the questions. The reason I bring that up is because I've had a couple of students who have pointed out, it's like, hey, that's, that's something worth knowing. And that very often we memorize that the medulla, that's where, medulla oblongata, that's where the cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12 come from. So that's the CMI PONS MEDU, little uh, acronym there, or mnemonic device. MEDU, so four letters in MEDU, indicating the last four cranial nerves, so 9, 10, 11, 12. So realistically, if you have a medullary stroke, chances are it's going to affect your cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12. However, this is really parsing that down even farther into the medial and lateral medullary syndromes. Medial is more of that paralysis. You get paralysis of the tongue, ipsilaterally and contralateral upper and lower extremities. Whereas the lateral medullary syndrome, you have that pain and temperature loss. So there you go. There's your practice question for today. Be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we've got here. Really, we're several hundred strong and, and several hundred deep and going strong. Uh, be sure to check us out over at ptfinalexam.com. If you haven't yet, I'd encourage you to leave a review uh, on the podcast, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast, whether it be on a Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is. It really helps. We're trying to get the word out. And in the meantime, I hope you take good care of yourselves. Keep a grin on your chin. We'll create fist pumps all around. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.